Hey guys, this is Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to be taking a look at a different type of software that we can use in conjunction with Cheat Engine that will help us find these mono type games that uses mono, uh, assembly C sharp, uh, to help us find cheats a lot easier, a lot better, and it doesn't rely so much on the hunting and packing way that we do that we learned in the past but now that you got your feet wet and doing mono now we're going to be taking a look at a little more advanced things that you can do to find these things a lot better to have codes that maybe cheat engine can't find so well and uh, I want to thank Agent Luck and he is a great game hacker that hangs out over the discord and also Facebook channels and uh, He's the one that showed me this, and I knew nothing about D Inspire before this. Absolutely nothing. So, and I want to thank him for the very in depth tutorial he gave me on it. Now, he did show me a more advanced way of doing this, and uh, right now I want to show you a more basic form of it, and then we can get into the more complex thing uh, at a later date, which I plan on doing as well. No, for right now we're just going to get our feet wet and we're going to show you how you can modify or hack a game using DN Spy in combination with Cheat Engine so we can have our Cheat Engine scripts run the way we want them to find these things a lot easier and it's really great so stick around I'm going to bring everything up and I'll be right back with you one thing before I do that is that uh, I do have separate channels running from the system and also my microphone however uh, the the mic channel also picks up the system channel so I do have to keep the game up for some of this tutorial you're going to hear the music uh, there's just not much I can do about it right now until I can uh, go in there and just take a look and figure out how to uh, separate these things again but for right now uh, if the music's bothering you and everything I'm sorry so let's go ahead and get started okay now we need to do a little bit of setup before we actually get started okay and these techniques are also used in the way they crack software and things like that I'm not teaching how to do that but you know these techniques can be used for our purposes also so I want to go ahead and we want to do a little bit of setup before we get started and uh, this is the game we're going back to regalia we're going to be looking at infinite authority points and no resources for building materials and we're going to use the inspire to help us locate these things and hack the game that way a whole lot easier let's go ahead and uh, right click on it open the file location this is the regalia folder and we need to go to that assembly c sharp dll so i'm just going to go to regalia data and it's usually it's always in managed right here and you'll see us in with C sharp right here first thing you want to do save you a copy and I would recommend saving a couple of copies we're just going to paste but I'm not going to do that but I would also save you one like to your desktop just to have you know out of the way somewhere just in case you accidentally use the original and not mean to that way you don't have to reinstall the game but what I do is I just rename that original. Now it's only going to load up the name C, excuse me, assembly dash C sharp ELL because that's the name it's looking for. That's the name it's programmed to look for. And you'll see that we have to keep changing the names back and forth. <coughs> First thing I'm going to look up is the authority points. And if you remember last time we discussed this, I told you that the authority points was impossible to scan for in Cheat Engine. And when I say scan for, that means using the value scanner, first scan, next scan, all that mess. Because each time you gain an authority point, it changes addresses. It assigns it a whole new dynamic address. Each time you use one, it assigns it a whole new address. So getting an authority point and losing an authority point, it's always changing addresses. It's address shifting each and every time it's being utilized. Impossible to scan for. You will not find it this way. Just can't do it. So we had to use mono to help us out, and it was hunt and pack, hunt and pack, hunt and pack. And it just took forever. And then finally we find a location where it actually set the value, but every single value that is going through that uh, that particular function and to backtrace it back was very hard to do <clears throat> because we you know we didn't know how to set it there or where it was taking us and like I say 
every single value was going through that and it was just a big mess so I just decided to put a flag there and turn the flag on because it's not constantly being accessed it's only being accessed when we actually utilize it and it turned the flag back off after it wrote the value it was totally a major pain it took me almost a day just to locate it write the script and get it done however using D Inspire, I could have probably done it within 30 minutes maybe less and that's because I have very little knowledge and I'm going to put the download link for DN Spy in the description. It's a free software program. And I want to thank again Agent Luck for introducing me to this. Now it does help to have a little C sharp coding knowledge or just coding in general in another language other than assembly. Okay, so and I have very little, I'll be honest with you. I have some experience with Lua, but they basically, if you look at them, they're all doing the same things. They just have different commands and all that mess. But if you look at it, you say, okay, yeah, it's doing kind of the same thing. I get what's going on here. But, you know, without that little bit of basic knowledge, uh, this probably ain't going to help you that much. Other than locating what you want to locate, because the Inspire will find this stuff a lot easier than Cheat Engine will. And I'm going to show you. So let's go ahead and bring up the game. Again, I apologize about the music. I can't really turn it down much because they're going through two different channels. It's going through a system channel. It's going through my mic channel. <clears throat> and I need the mic on so I can talk. And I want to bring up this assembly C sharp into my D and Spy. So what I do is I just drag and drop it on top of D and Spy just like so. Let me load this up so it gets off this type of music. And we're going to go do the authority points. Now authority points give us another turn. It also is required to have a certain amount to do specials and things like that. You have to have authority points. So. so I'm just going to leave it right here for the time being. And what I want to do is I want to go in here and find the authority points you know what I don't even need this up right now because I just don't want that music playing while I'm trying to talk and what I want to do is we can use the search feature now you won't have this right off the bat you just mash this little magnifying glass up here and it brings you to the search or you can mash control shift K and it also brings this up too so you want your little search function and basically that's what we're searching for authority points and it'll scour that C sharp DLL that we're using here. And this is all the times it's being called, utilized, and everything that it decompile. And we can see exactly what it's going to. But what we kind of want to look for is things that will help us out. You know, you change that might, but we see it's in battle UI. Stay away from UI. Uh, we see authority points here. And this is a good location. It's getting and setting the authority points. That's usually where you want to go. When you see get and set, this is where you usually want to make your modifications. It's retrieving. So that means the function is calling the value. Here it is setting the value. We know that every time it sets the value, it is changing, putting it in a new address each and every time. So we need it to set this before it actually, we want it to set a specific value instead of whatever it's calculating from here so here's where a little bit of trial and error and your knowledge of coding comes in to play which i have very little of so i have to do the trial and error method so basically what i want to do is just see if i can set this value right here instead of wherever it's calculating it i want to see if i can set it to what i want it to be and there's a function that's going to to calculate this and there's a function that's going to to set it so the way I do that is I just right click let me go back to it sorry about that there it is right here I just right click on it and edit method C sharp let it decompile it and basically I'm just going to and this is an integer and you can tell it's an integer right here now sometimes these would be float values if it was a float value then I would need to put an F behind it just like that that means 999 float but we are dealing with an integer okay so it is an integer so we can set it just like this 999 as an integer go ahead and compile that 
make sure it does compile if it doesn't you have to try another method <clears throat> or you know get some kind of help with somebody that knows a little bit about coding in C sharp alright so we want to just give that a try and this is why we saved the original copy we want to have just the original C sharp and we want to have a modded assembly C sharp and I'm going to show you why what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to save model or I can save all it doesn't matter they both do the same thing and uh, this just gives you the path of your assembly C sharp that we're working on just click OK and it will save the compiled new modded version of this right here so first off we want to go see if it works we want to go ahead and bring up cheat engine also so we can attach it to the game let's go ahead and do that now remember now it's loading up our patched assembly C sharp and we patched it with that we did the compile it right here and then we went to save it and it saved over what we already had so now we're using the modified version of the assembly C sharp we want to go see if it works first and foremost we don't really need cheat engine at the moment but we're going to go ahead and use it <clears throat> because we're going to need it here in just a minute. And I'm going to clear what I have here already because I don't want to confuse anybody so I'm just going to clear the list and we're going to do this like from scratch. <coughs> Alright, I'm going to get to a save location where I know I'm not far away from the battle so just let me get to it. While we're waiting on it to load we can go ahead and activate mono and dissect mono because we're going to need this here in just a minute. And if you have not seen the past videos in regards to that, Stephen Chapman has a good lesson on it. And uh, I got several on here that I will put up in the upper right hand corner for you. On using Mono uh, Dissector and Cheat Engine. Alright. So what we want to do is we want to go get into a fight. Alright. So we'll go to a new node and one we're right and been to yet. Enter node. And this will start up a battle sequence. Alright, finish deployment. And take a look. Here's our authority points right here. Normally we just have one. We just want to make sure that it's just not a graphical something. And here's where we would spend an authority point. Right here. And it stays infinite. Take a look. Make sure it stays infinite. We shouldn't, in the normal game, we should not be able to use this again. We have to cycle through the entire thing before it'll give us another authority point. And look, it gives us another turn, so we know that successfully modded the assembly C sharp DLL. I should not have been able to make that move right there. So that's good. Now what we want to do is get into here and find where it was modified and the inspire can help us with that. We modified it in the get or excuse me in the set location. Right here, let's see here, battle view model. So if I double click this, I need to make sure I get on the right one. So get authority points, get authority points, get authority points. Here it is right here this one right here it carries us to this and we just modify what it's going to set regardless of whatever it gets here and we can see that this one is located in battle view model so that's what we need to look for battle view model we're looking for get authority points and set authority points so let's get back over to our cheat engine mono dissector and that's what we're looking for battle view model Let's extend this out just a little bit. Let me see what's going on a little better. Let's get down to battle. It's on down here. Battle view model right here. And if you kind of lose your spot or forget, you can always go back here. It tells you exactly where it is. If you double click on it, it carries you right to the code. So if I lose it or something, I can go right back to it. Double click on it. It carries me right back to our modification. It's in battle view model. Battle view model, we're going to extend that out. 
extend out methods. And that's what we're looking for. Get authority points. There we go. Get authority points property. No, we didn't use that one. That was somewhere else. Remember, that was this up here. So that's not it. So this one here. Get authority points, set authority points. That has to be it. So let's go down. Which one did we modify? Remember, we got two different ones. Get and set. We modified these set authority points. Take a look. It's in the set section. We just modified it directly. So we want to go to set authority points. So we're going to use the just in time feature. We're going to JIT. And it's going to carry to that code. And take a look right here. You can see right off the bat 3E7 being moved into EDX. 3E7 in hex is 999. And I'm going to show you. 3E7. And it's decimal equivalent is 999. So we, <coughs> we need to take the screen print and we're gonna use paint to help us out here. And I'll show you why in just a minute. We need to compare. This is our modified code. You can see here, it's moving 3E7 hex into EDX, that's 999. We're gonna save that off to the side. And what we need to do is close the game down completely. Closing on down. I'm going to use Task Manager. I'm a little impatient to go through 14 different screens to close down the game. So let's get rid of that. Close that back down. All right. We're going to minimize the inspire just for a second here. And here's where we go back to our modded version and our original version in the data file here. And I'm going to rename this C sharp and we're just going to call it Hacked. This is our modded hack version, and we want to change the name of the original back to just a regular assembly C sharp. So assembly C sharp. There we go. There we go. So now when I load up the game, it's just going to load up the regular version, the unmodded version, which we only have one authority point. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and load this back up. Need to close this down because we need to reattach it to Cheat Engine. Let's go ahead and uh, let me try that again. And I'm not going to load the associated table. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to our location, and I'm going to go directly to the battle. And the same thing let's just go ahead and set our characters and you can see here we're back to one authority point so we just playing the regular game that's fine sorry about the music I apologize I accidentally brought up two all right let's go back to you and activate mono features and dissect mono and we need to go back to that same exact spot and if you forget Let's go back to the spy, take a look. Remember it was in battle, view model, and we're looking for get authority points and set authority points, which is right here, sorry. So let's go back down to battle view model. Right here. And here we go. Get and set. And we know we modified the set, so let's just in time. And this is the original, the unmodded version of it, okay? So what we want to do is bring back up our paint that we used to do a screen print. This is the modded version, unmodded version. Let's see what's different. We take a look right here at RCX, move RAX into RCX. Right above it is our modded, or I'm sorry, right below it is our modded EDX, our destination index. And we see here it's actually moving the 1 into RDX right here. And EDX is the 32-bit 
version of RDX. So we're going to use EDX. And all we need to do is just modify this area right here. Just like we, just like it's done for us when we modded the actual assembly C Sharp DLL. And I'm just going to use a regular code injection, which means mono features do have to be on for this to even work. But it finds the code a lot easier, and it'll always be the same because mono addresses are the same each and every time you bring up the game, that regardless of where it's allocated. <coughs> so this right here, we're just going to change to move into EDX, and you can do it two ways. You can do 3E7, which is hex 99, or 999, or you can use the integer form of it, which is 999. A little pound sign with 999 means tells the computer this is an integer of 999. Or you can do it like this, int 999. It does not matter. All are correct. I'm just going to use what the computer shows us, 3E7, which is the hex of 999. Okay? So I'm going to save that to the current cheat table. And we're going to label it authority points test. Let's go back to our game. We see if we if we use one, it's just going to go to zero. If we turn this on, we want to make sure it restores everything. And I don't. Let me go back and do something. I don't like using this right here, which is fine. But I like using the bytes. Define byte. I'm just click OK. All right. Now we want to make sure that it jumps to allocated memory and restores this original lock code. So let's just test it. It does, and it restores. Very good. So we're going to leave the code on, and we're just going to go use a move and use an authority point and see if that goes up in. And we still need to move, I guess. All right. Take a look. Nine, nine, nine. So that works. And it will stay infinite as long as I leave that on. If I turn it back off, it's just doing regular. It'll start taking away again. So, so we know that works. So now we can put up here, instead of test. We still want to test it throughout the whole game, but when you're making your trainer and everything. We found that a whole lot easier. We were able to modify it better. I didn't have to use a flag and compare out and all that mess that I had to do last time. Which I will show you. I just made life a, a thousand percent easier for myself. This is what I had to do last time. Look, I had to ha have an authority flag, set authority, take a look, take a look at this mess. I had to do all that just to do the exact same thing that you saw right there. And this helped me out so much better, so much easier, and got the job done a lot more efficient. So DN Spy does help us. I want to show you one more example, and we're going to do it where we can build buildings in our town without having to use resources. Doing it the same way we just did. I'll be right back. Okay, I've loaded up a different save file of where we can go into construction mode. And this is where we go to build our town. You see we need resources and everything like that. So if I was to build this on up, I'm going to do it a couple of times here just to get something down where it won't let me build anymore and I'm going to show you. Okay, we finished that one. As you can tell, I'm using past hacks on a, in a save file. So. Alright, so now we don't have any more glimmer. We cannot go up another level for our end. It will not let us do that. So we want to hack it so no matter how many we have, regardless, it'll allow us to keep building as much as we want. So that's what we're going to be looking at next. Alright, so before we get started, we need to get back to our hack copy because we do not want to mess this one up. This is our original. So we're going to go back and name it original. and changed our hat back to Simply C Sharp, back to its original name. That way we can go mess around. And that's why I say you probably want to have a couple, maybe one on your desktop. Uh, 
in case you mess up or something like that if you accidentally left that on and went and started modding stuff and you saved here then you ain't got another c-sharp file so i really recommend that you keep an original like away from this folder period and that way you have an original backup just in case you accidentally do that and i have done that so <clears throat> it's going right good so I'm going to kind of go through this one quicker since we've got our feet wet with it because I don't have much time to do this in. So basically what we're looking for here is uh, building cost, I guess, or we want to narrow this. Uh, let's just go back to cost, building cost. Take a look around. Building cost for variant. That's what we're looking for. Variant means the next level. Building resource cost, that's in UI, so we can't really use that. Building cost in UI, we don't really want that. Get a melt. Building cost for next variant. This is interesting here. Building cost for next variant, and this is returning a value. Let me get back to it here. Get this key, and we're just taking a look around, and here's where it's doing the calculations if it costs something and you can modify it probably in anywhere you want I had a little trouble with it because it's using uh, several different functions and what I did is I uh, basically modified where it was given the return value the return when it calculates the value it's returning whatever it calculated here and sending it back to the game so I modified it here it says this variant plus one resource cost for variant and this is where we want to modify or swear I modified this is not written in stone you can modify it in several different places to get the same result so basically instead of doing its calculation or sending it to do its calculation I want it to return back zero and that's I just tried it out to see if it worked so I'm going to save model and we want to make sure we understand where it's at. Assets, Regalia, Game, General Manor, Manager, Game Logic, Town, Helpers, Town Building. We need to memorize that. Or don't need to memorize it, but just be aware. So let's bring up the modded version and see if it works. So it's going to load up our modded version. Because that's the one we set to be active. And we are going to attach it to Cheat Engine. Go ahead and have Cheat Engine activate mono features and dissect mono structure because we are going to need that just like the other time and you see we haven't really done anything different now i know i'm kind of flying through this one i'm sorry i'm just running out of time but hopefully you know I, you see i'm not really doing anything different than what you just saw and like i say you got to go kind of play around in the coding not screw things up you know and if it crashes just you know pick up where you left off bring it back up again it's going to happen so i want to get back to our building cost <clears throat> go back to it oh and take a look here don't have enough materials to construct but our construction button is still activated and it's letting us build Remember, we built this twice. Make sure it's going to work. Then we went over here. We used it one time, and then we couldn't use it a second time. Let us do it a second time. And it does. We went up to level three. We couldn't do that last time. And we can continue going all the way around. So good. We know that's working. So where do we say it was again? Uh, let's see. Game managers, game logic town, helpers. Make sure that's the right one. Sends us here. Resource cost for next variant. We just set to zero, zero cost whatsoever. So let's go to this one. Now there's two sections here. There one's like a, a main section and a branch section. So we want to go to this one right here where it says town building. So if you don't see it, what you're looking for in the first section of it, which you won't in regards to this game I mean let's see where is it general manager I pass it yeah general manager game logic 
town manager and you see it's not showing us the town building All right here's town building cost town building state that's not the one we're in see they're two different ones there's also another section so go through your a b c d e f g all the way to z z whichever term you use for it <coughs> on down and then you'll see it comes to the different section right here and let's go to let's look through it general managers and we need to go to game logic town building town helpers and town building that's it right there you can also use the search feature but that just take a little bit longer I prefer to do it manually we want to expand methods and let's make sure we understand what we're getting resource cost for next variant that's what we're looking for so we're going to go down here take a look resource cost for next for variant that's not next variant here's resource cost for next variant current and next <coughs> all right so let's hit that one and this should be our modified code and we can already see right away look what it's doing to our index registry edx zero in it out XOR, anytime you XOR a registry, it zeroes it out. That's just another way of putting zero into EDX. So what I want to do is I want to take a screen print of it. So we match screen print. And we're going to do the exact same thing. This is our modified code. Right here. So we do the exact same thing that we did last time. We're going to rename this one back to modded or hacked or whatever you want to say, just so you know what it is. And we're going to rename this one back to the original. Now, I know this will be asked. They just say, can't you just use your hack version and every time you load up the game, it'll load up your hacks? Absolutely. You just can't turn them off. We want to do it in Cheat Engine where we can make a trainer where people can turn it on and off as they see fit. So that's the reason I'm doing it this way. But if you just want to patch a C sharp file and just load up your game with the hacks, absolutely you can do that. And it'll just load up what you have modded in there already and you start the game with all your hacks on. So however you want to do it, don't matter. But if you make trainers, you more than likely want to do it this way instead of having people just download a modded A C sharp DLL. But you can do that too. All right, so we're going to close this down. We need to close the game back down and bring it back up. So load this C sharp in task. All right, let's get back to where we're building the buildings again, or the town, and check our resources. And we're back to normal. Okay, good. So let's go back to our modified code right here. Where was it at? Uh, general managers, game logic town, helpers, town building. Okay. And we know it's way on down here in the second portion of this. Okay, game logic, and we need town helpers. And town building right here. Same thing as that right there. And what was we looking for? Resource cost for next variant. So expand the methods. Here it is right here, let's go to it. And this is the original code. Let's take a look at what's different. Well, we can already see what's different. It has the movie doubles to assign extended and increasing EDX. And all we have over here in our MIDI version, it's taken both of those out, basically, and just added an XOR EDX. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm going to come up here, Cheat table framework code, same thing, code injection. I know I'm going through this a little bit quicker. I like using the bytes. Just going to void that one out. We're going to change this one to XOR EDX. EDX, just like that. 
same as our modified version and let's name it uh, building cost test okay bring the game back up now we're going to check on it nothing let's see still the same let's go back to our memory view right quick we still want to test it to make sure it sets everything back properly so it jumps sets everything back very good so let's turn it on and see what happens now and take a look so let's turn it back off let's really test it and get to where we cannot build something like we did last time so let's just take a second So we can only do this one time so it goes up to level two <clears throat> and it wouldn't let us go up to level three hey we need more glimmer some more of that right there so it will not let us go no matter how many times we click it so let's go turn our cheat on there's our cheat go back to the game and we're back and take a look now we're back up to level three and we can keep on building so that's it fellas that's how you do it I want to thank again Agent Luck uh, for teaching me this. It's a lot easier to find things. It's a lot easier to mod things in games using the mono feature. And uh, it's, it just kind of helps utilizing D Inspire with Cheat Engine. So this is really good stuff. And we'll get into it more later and do something a little more complex and learn a few new things about it. But we'll do that on a later date. I want to thank you guys so much for coming out and supporting Cheat the Games the way you do. I also want to thank all the Patreon partners and donators that are considered partners as well. Thank you so much for uh, donating and helping Cheat the Game. Uh, this would not exist without you, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, we do have some more things coming out. We do have some giveaways that we're going to be giving out also. We gave out some free games here recently to Patreon partners. And we're going to have more in the future. So if you would like to become a partner, uh, please go over to the Patreon. All the details are there for you. And I, I want to thank you also for coming out, supporting the supporting the group and the channel and all the game hackers that help out at all the sites that cheat the game is on uh, y'all do a, a fantastic job and just devote all your time and energy into helping cheat the game and i really appreciate it exploit mods has made a bot force in uh the facebook uh, i'm sorry in the discord channel and did a real good job of it so thank you pal i appreciate you doing that for me and uh it works really well so there's you know there's all kind of ways you can contribute to cheat the game that's very much appreciated and we appreciate all the hard work all these game hackers do to help make cheat the game a greater place so come join us if you get the chance to well i i this way went on way longer than i wanted it to i'm terribly sorry about that so I, i'm out of time but i will see you next go around and we will pick up probably where we left off or i might just show you something new with uh far cry 5 i'm thinking about doing that but I'll go ahead and uh, cut on out of here. You guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because Bleed doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care. Now.